Hi everyone, this is Winnie or Miss Tang. Imagine if we lived in a world with no capital letters or punctuation. This is what our books would look like. Pause the video for 10 seconds and see if you can make sense of any of this. Today we are learning to identify and use capital letters, commas and full stops. This is because when we are using capital letters, we are trying to indicate the beginning of a sentence. Or we might be using a proper noun, or a heading, or a subheading, or we might be using an acronym. For commas, we're wanting to separate the words in a list. It could be separating clauses or some ideas. With a full stop, we want to show the end of a sentence, or we're using it for an abbreviation. Our success criteria today, for good, let's see if you can recognize capital letters and commas in a text. For great, see if you can include capital letters, commas, and a full stop in your sentences. And for amazing, can you correctly use capital letters, commas, and full stops in your sentences? So we know that capital letters are used to indicate these four areas. Let's have a look at some examples. Here's an example of it being used at the beginning of a sentence. This is an example from a narrative that I have written called Amber and the Brow Beating Bully. And this is actually a prequel to the book that my friend and I are writing. She was 11 years old. So you can see that we've used a capital letter at the beginning and we also used a full stop at the end. The hall had a high ceiling, capital T and a full stop at the end. Here's an example of proper nouns. So they are people, places, or things. Amber was a cheerleader. So we not only have Amber as a name, but it is also at the beginning of the sentence. So it's an example of both proper noun and to show the beginning of a sentence. Mrs. Robinson was the cheerleading coach. So Mrs. Robinson is a name of a character. So we have the capital M and the capital R. And we also have the full stops at the end of these sentences. The chaotic cats cheerleading team were practicing after school in Bubbleville's school hall. So we have chaotic cats as the name of the cheerleading team and we also have Bubbleville, the capital B for the name of a place. And then we also have the sentence Rufus was wearing his best dad ever apron. So Rufus is a name of a character so we've got a capital R and then we also have the name of his thing, his apron called the best dad ever. Example of a heading and some proper nouns as well. So we have the heading for the narrative, Amber and the Brow Beating Bully of Bubbleville. So you can see that we've got the capital A for the proper noun and beginning of the title. We also have Brow Beating Bully of Bubbleville. And this is a prequel to Amber and the Pesky Plastic Problem, which is a children's book that my friend and I have been writing. So you can see that you've got your capital letters and then you also have the capital letters in the headings as well as the proper nouns of the people who wrote the book. Acronyms. So here are some acronyms that I have used. Let's see. Did you notice that what a good one looks like is an acronym? So WAGGLE, which is also called. I've also included two other acronyms in this video too. You've got your WALT, so we are learning too. You've got your TIB, this is because. And there is also another one that I have been using or my friend and I have been using when we are drafting and writing and editing our book. We usually name our document something called WIP and this stands for work in progress because we are constantly working on the manuscript of our book together so it is a work in progress. Here are some other acronyms that you may have already heard of. For example, LOL, which stands for laugh out loud. You've got YOLO, you only live once. You've got ASAP, as soon as possible. And I've also included in here some acronyms if you're a big Swifty like me, Taylor Swift version. So let's see all the Taylor Swift fans out there. If you know what these acronyms stand for, you've got SIO. What does that one stand for? Shake it off. You've got LWYMMD, which stands for look what you made me do. Now we're going to have a look at commas. So a comma is a punctuation mark, just like a full stop. It separates the parts of sentences. So it separates the words, the clauses, the ideas in a sentence. And here are some examples of what a good one looks like or a waggle. Commas to separate words, like in a list, 
We need someone who is respectful, comma, positive, comma, persistent, comma, hardworking, comma, inspiring, comma, brave, and a good role model. So this is a sentence that is listing all these words and you use a comma to separate them. Commas to separate clauses. Amber ran to her final position of the cheerleading dance, comma, but it was too late. Full stop. So you can see the capital letter for A for Amber, proper noun, and then you've got your comma to separate the two clauses and then a full stop. Commas to separate ideas. The hall had a high ceiling, full stop. This was essential, comma, especially as flyers, comma, like Amber, comma, were constantly being tossed upwards during the stunts in the routine. So we're separating different ideas here. So we're saying that the hall had a high ceiling and that's its own sentence. And then in the next sentence, we're saying why this is essential because you've got people in a cheerleading team called flyers, for example, like Amber. So flyers are the people who are being thrown up in the air and then caught again. And here's a fun fact for you. I did some cheerleading when I was younger, so this is me as a flyer. Now it's your turn. Can you identify the capital letters and punctuation such as full stops and commas used in the sentences in the book that you are reading? And can you write your own sentences with the correct use of punctuation and capital letters? To learn how to help your reader understand what you are writing, here is my grammar and punctuation playlist right here. See you in my next video. Bye.